Hey everyone, welcome to Duel Are You Young? I'm Brett. Today we have Kristen Ramirez from Ohm. Kristen started a yoga studio in Costa Rica and has since grown it into a thriving yoga tourism destination with classes 363 days of the year, a hostel, surfing, and more. She's built a community service element into the business where participants and employees of her business engage with the community and share the gift of yoga. This is an inspiring story you won't want to miss. Here's what you're going to get out of watching the interview. You'll learn how a creative writing and Spanish major developed the confidence to start her own business. You'll learn the concrete steps Kristen took to get more customers and develop her yoga studio into a thriving business. And you'll hear Kristen's take on the trends in yoga and destination travel and how you can follow in her footsteps to launch a business of your own. Be sure to check out Kristen's website at vivaelmomento.com. Now, let's get started with Kristen. Well, hi, Kristen. Tell us a little bit about Ohm, how you got started, and, and what, what you do in this business. Um, so there's, there's so much to that question, <laughs> but Ohm, Ohm is, uh, to make it short, a, a hostel and yoga studio. Um, I also offer body, body and energy work. My husband is a uh, tour guide and surf instructor. Mm -hmm. Um, we're involved in a lot of community service events and actually recently a really awesome community project working with coffee and chocolate farmers moved in downstairs. So there's a whole lot of stuff going on here, um, something for everybody, and it's, it's just super fun. I ended up here and ended up in this kind of just uh, by deepening my, my yoga and body work practice and, and finding a way to do what I love. Um, for a living, so that's kind of the the short version. Sure. Terrific. So, and yeah. uh, so let's let's back up to, you know, how how long have you uh, been doing this yoga studio? And take us through those first few months of when you decided you were going to start this up. Um. So, Ohm has been open for about five years now. Okay. Uh, there's been lots lots of changes and lots of growth within those five years. Um, when I first decided to open, I was still currently residing in the United States and making a lot of trips back and forth. So we were able to get the ball rolling a little bit from, from being away as far as getting, getting a space ready, getting a lot of the equipment ready, getting kind of my, my business plan ready. But, um, you know, the real, the real sweetness couldn't come until I really arrived and we could see how it was all going to work. And then, of course, we had to start all of the, the, the licensing and scheduling and all of the administrative part once I got here. So um, it's definitely been an adventure. I, I've never run a business before in my life. Mm. It, wasn't, it wasn't necessarily my life goal to run a business. Um, and a lot of it just came out of my own passion for yoga, and I wanted a place to practice yoga mm -hmm. in this place that I loved so much. Um, and it wasn't available, so I went, you know what? I guess, I guess I'll just make it. <laughs> so not only have I been learning how to run a business and and the processes involved in that, but doing it in my in my second language, which has been definitely an interesting ride. Mm -hmm. I'll bet. What what yeah. was it in your background in your upbringing that gave you the the confidence in that you could you could start a business not having previous experience um i mean i i definitely just need to accredit so much to my family mm -hmm. they i grew up in maine and i'm a, I'm a really proud mainer go maine yeah and uh you know in a in a really hard working family um I have I have a brother and a sister. They're both super hard workers. My my dad, when he'd have days off, was working all day in the yard, you know. And and I'm so thankful for that. I've had a job since I was 14 years old. So I kind of just had the confidence that if I that if I worked hard enough, um, I could make it. I could make it happen. And um, and they also gave me the support to do something that many people saw as being absolutely crazy and illogical. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I didn't go to business school. I studied creative writing in Spanish. So people were looking at me like, what are you thinking? This is nuts. And my family kind of was always there going, if you're going to be happy, then go for it. So it, it really came from them. You know, they let me really spread my, my wings and I ended up here. And I'm not sure if I would have been able to do that without 
without their blessing. So that's really been such an amazing gift. And to this day, they're supportive. They, would, they wouldn't have it any other way. And I miss them a lot uh, being so far away, mm -hmm. but I know they wouldn't like it if I was working in a windowless office doing a nine, nine to five and they knew I was miserable. So sure. yeah, definitely, definitely got the push from them and the freedom and the confidence and, and the work ethic. So thanks fam. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to send a link to the uh, the video once it's up so they can watch this. Yeah, so, I will. Um, so tell me a little bit about the, those early uh, months where you were just getting off the ground. What did you do to get your initial client base? How did you promote the business and, and get those first clients in the door? Um, a lot of very roots, <laughs> roots style promotion um, we we depended on and still very much do depend on um, word of mouth and our reputation basically um, we're really big on quality control at this point in time five years in we get a lot of people coming in and they want to be part of the community and they want to offer their services um, and we only hire the most the most qualified people and the effect that that has is no matter what service you're coming here for you're going to receive a very high quality service. And in turn, those people go and they tell five of their friends wherever they're traveling to next within Costa Rica, or they tell five of their friends at home, or they're Facebooking about it. Um, and it just creates more and more traffic. Um, so we've, we've had to do a bit more online. We actually finally got a website like in the last two years. That was a real big deal. Um, but when we when we first opened, we did a lot of footwork. I mean, I, I would personally ride my bike or walk to town, and at this time living several kilometers up into the jungle. Every day I'd be coming down on my bike, handing out flyers, handing out calendars, um, offering free classes to people that, especially in this culture where people, when we first opened, many people had no idea what yoga even was. And I had people say, like, oh, you know, I can't. Um, I can't do yoga because my my church says I can't or I can't do yoga because I have this or that injury and there was a million reasons why they couldn't do yoga and a lot of it was just they had no idea what it was. So giving a lot of of time to sit down and speak with people, make sure they understood what the practice was about and my husband and I being the owners of the business actually doing the footwork as well. So in the, in the initial days, you didn't see anyone working for Ohm. Mm -hmm. The only employees were my husband and I. And so if you had questions about a service, you were getting it directly from the source. Um, and that served us very well. Thank goodness we've grown to a point now where we have other, we have other resources. We use a lot more online. Um, promotions and have have people to kind of help us with the groundwork but definitely when we first got up and running it was that was all us <laughs> sure definitely a lot of a lot of hustling right yeah a lot, a lot of, of hustling nights. a lot of hustling yeah and then and a lot of education initiatives as well mm -hmm. because as I said uh, moving into this culture and offering something that many people had no experience with there was a lot of misunderstanding about what it even was that we were doing so um, yeah, it's and and it's growing on them, I think. <laughs> sure. Well, and and so you mentioned that you got your start this business 5 years ago and that you didn't have an online presence until 2 years ago. I'm wondering how has that kind of shifted your strategies and maybe talk a little bit about how you network, how you uh use social media to promote your brand online. Yeah, um we actually did we did have Facebook. Mm -hmm. Pretty, pretty shortly after we, we opened, sure. but other than Facebook, we didn't have a whole lot until about two years ago, and, and that has def definitely changed the name of the game. Um, we get a lot of traffic directly as a result of both our website and also from TripAdvisor, mm -hmm. um, and you know people linking as well from our website, we link to various um, you know, things that we can stand behind. We link to various travel blogs, uh, other yoga studios, other Seva projects that we believe in. 
Um, we always link to each other. And the, the surf and yoga communities within Costa Rica, or really the entire country, is just so, uh, so small. We can barely go anywhere without, without knowing someone. And the, the yoga is so close-knit that um, we, we link to almost every yoga space within Costa Rica, and it really creates this beautiful web and community the whole countrywide. So, um, yeah, we have a we have Facebook, we have a page. Uh, we always promo our events that way as well as here um, on site and around town. So, it's it's definitely immediately brought a lot more traffic in the last couple years as we've gotten more and more into the swing of the online world. <laughs> sure, no, that's great. And are you seeing? Tell me a little bit about the trend that you're seeing as far as um, yoga and 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 travel. So are people coming to Costa Rica and making yoga, this kind of yoga experience, be a central part of their trip? Yes. Okay. Um, an enthusiastic, definitely. Mm -hmm. It's it's so amazing to see. Um, Puerto Viejo, which is on the South Caribbean coast, has not uh, historically been the number one destination for yoga within Costa Rica. Um, but that was, as I said, that in, in the years previous, there, there wasn't really much being offered. Um, and what was being offered was sometimes here, sometimes not. Um, so generally, you know, there's a couple areas of Costa Rica that are actually known for having these super high quality yoga trainings um, and yoga studios. And it's so wonderful because the yoga community is just, they're such great people to work with. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't hand select a better group of clientele. It's, it's people that they're so grateful for the services. Uh, you know, generally speaking, they're so, they're so friendly and compassionate and just excited to be here. Mm -hmm. And it's a common thread that links us all together. I mean, you can meet people from all walks of life and then you find out you both practice the same style of yoga and it's mm -hmm. like, it's all over your yeah. fast friends, you know? So it's been, um, yeah, I mean, it's in the first couple of years when we opened, when we were seeing class, one class after the other, you know, one student, zero students, I'd have four students and it would be reason to celebrate that day, you know, and, and seeing that for a couple of years and now seeing how the groups have changed and we get people coming in and setting up for themselves their own personal retreat and they're in doing yoga one to three times a day mm -hmm. um, and testing out the different styles and the different spaces. Now there's a couple different yoga spaces available in the South Caribbean and they're hopping around and they're going to workshops here and they're going to workshops at the next one and and um, it's really cool. I, I, I love what's happening in the South Caribbean. It's bringing more and more of this type of clientele, which is amazing for us because prior to this, the main, the main niche in tourism has been that Puerto Viejo is great for parties. Hmm. So it's okay. like, you know, you have this whole crew of people coming down who want to go go and, and dance to the reggae all night long. And then you have this other group of people that are here for these personalized retreats and, and really some soul searching and healthy practices. So um, I'm really liking what I'm seeing happening in the, in the yoga and holistic health kind of market here in the Caribbean. Sure. My dad is getting into yoga, so I'm going to have to pitch the idea to him. They like spending uh, a couple months in warmer climates every year, so I'll have to pitch the idea of a destination yoga trip. Oh, my gosh. That would be <laughs> so amazing. I would love that. So – we talked a little bit about the, the future of, of uh, this destination yoga thing. What, what can you tell me about the future of, of OM, your business, and, and specifically around uh, the training that you had called out earlier that you're looking at um, trying to develop within the community? Yeah. Um, we, um, we are definitely developing our offerings. We started really small, a couple group classes a week, you know, five, five to seven group classes a week. Mm -hmm. um, at this point in time, during peak seasons, we're offering up to 20 different classes a week. Um, getting more into offering workshops and more um, continuing education opportunities, specifically in this field. Um, working with some amazing amazing teachers from all over the world that you know they're just dying to come to Costa Rica and 
if they need to teach a workshop or do a training in order to facilitate their trip here, then they're all about it. So lucky for us, we get this really high quality flow of instructors from all over the world that they just want to, they just want to hang out here because it's so beautiful. Um, I'm currently working towards my 500 level, um, yoga certificate. So eventually when we register this, we'll be able to be registered as both a 200 and a 500 hour level yoga school. And what I'd really love to do is eventually get to the point where we're offering modules and less of an immersion format, which is wonderful for people that are on vacation. They can come down for five or six weeks at a time and just have all day, every day free and then earn their yoga certificate. That's wonderful. Um, but we really would like to offer some more opportunities for some of the local students, especially those that have been with us since, since day one and they're still sticking with it and they're, they're really developed in their practices. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, just because it's such a wonderful lifestyle, a path of peace and compassion, and it's so great to build on that within the community that we live in, but also because the, the local wage here is $2 an hour. Mm -hmm. Um, so to offer people that may not be able to afford going to university, many who haven't even finished through to a high school level of a degree, um, they can have this opportunity of a higher education in a different field and it just opens up a whole new world for them. You know, someone, someone might have the opportunity to be a stay at home mom and still earn more than the average weekly income by working two or three hours a week teaching yoga. So that's kind of our, our ultimate goal. Um, kind of encouraging in, in particular and especially the local students and working with some, some different scholarships and payment plan options. Sure. And I, I love that. And this came out when I was reading about you before our interview and checking out the website. I love that the mission is is bigger than just you know uh, connecting people with yoga and about yoga tourism. That it's more about community development. It's more about um, volunteer tourism. And you called out a little bit about the the seva community service aspect of your yoga business. Talk a little bit about what that is and and how you stay involved in that. Yeah, this. Um... This is a huge passion of mine since before I moved here. I've always been in some way, shape, or form involved with community service projects in many, many different areas. And before we were able to, to do this, these sort of projects through OM, um, in, the, in the beginning stages when OM was just a mini little platform with barely any students, I, I was volunteering at the animal, Jaguar Animal Rescue Center here in the community which is amazing. Um, and that was wonderful. And then thank goodness they've grown so large. They have such a huge application pool of people just dying to volunteer there. I kind of took it as my sign. You know, I think it's time for me to uh, refocus my energy in a, in a different area of need within the community. So um, I actually have built into the contracts that I have with my employees a mandatory community service clause, which um, I'm always kind of cringing as they're reading that part, like, oh, are they going to freak out that I'm making them do free work? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but most of the time, they're pretty supportive. I mean, save a, save a project, service, selfless service is, I think, really part of of the yogic path. And so most of the time they're, they're pretty cool with it and they pitch in where they can. We have a, um, surf, a surf and yoga program once a month free for the children of the community. We also have a free or, or optional donation yoga class once a week, uh, which is great, especially for the, for those locals, as I said, making $2 an hour. Mm -hmm. They don't get left behind. They can still practice yoga. There's no excuse for them not to come because if they don't have anything to contribute, then they're contributing their, their spirit and their energy to the practice, and we appreciate that. Um, any proceeds that do come in from that are going towards a project at the uh, Center of Education and Nutrition, which is in 
the center of town, Puerto Viejo. Um, also, I'm super excited. We just started linking up with this group called Talamanca Health and or the Talamanca Health Project, and they will soon be bringing down um, all kinds of goodies from from Lululemon. So we'll be working with some some scholarships and donations to local students dedicated to the practice and gifting them these these clothes and or mats that there's just no way in the world they would ever be able to afford a sixty dollar yoga shirt. Mm -hmm. um, and and it's such a it's such a wonderful thing. And then also Pretty soon, we're kicking off a scholarship program as well to offer to offer students unlimited monthly monthly yoga. Um, on as well on a scholarship, they'll have to fill out an application and have interviews, um, and we will choose uh, different students every month. So it's um, it's neat. It's they're they're really getting into it, and and I feel like the whole community service aspect is catching on. Oftentimes, we get guests in the hostel that. Uh, they want to come. They want to come to Surf Asana, for example, is the is the surf and yoga program, and they want to come and play with the kids, and they want to be a volunteer, and they don't ask anything in return. They just have fun, you know, teaching, mm -hmm. seeing the kids do yoga, and and they're they're so thankful just to be at a community event that's centered around health, um, but yet it's not it's not school, so we're not their teachers, we're not their parents. You know, and it gives them this sense of liberation and fun in a healthy setting. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of kids here, if they're not if they're not allotted these opportunities, by the time they hit 13 or 14, many times already not in school, they're looking for for options of how to make a living. And unfortunately, a lot of those options at that age are not definitely not healthy mm -hmm. uh, and definitely not not positive contributions to the community. So. Um, yeah, it's it's a really it's a really important piece of the puzzle for me. It's one of the pillars that we've built our our business around, and I'm I'm so happy and content with how it has grown. And the the more that Ohm grows, the more we are able to to be involved. And I'm really really thankful for that. Definitely, it sounds like a great program. I'll have to get some of these links to the Talamanca Health Project and some of the others that we yeah. talked about so I can put them in the show notes because I'm sure that there are some people watching that would love to get involved. Yeah, awesome organization. Yeah. I will definitely send you the link. Terrific. Well, I, I want to kind of wrap things up and, and talk a little bit more about the, um, the, the yoga business. And really, for those people watching, we've got a lot of you know travelers. We've got a, a, a number of travel bloggers. We've got a number of folks who have started travel businesses or working in the travel profession. If, if anyone is kind of on the fence starting a business, what advice can you provide to what are some concrete first steps that they should take to make that a reality? Um, my, my first piece of advice, which I don't know how concrete this is, mm -hmm. but it's always my first piece of advice for anyone considering this, um, is, is just go for it. If it's something that you want to do, I mean, the biggest setback I would have had had I allowed it were were the people around me that didn't feel comfortable with my decision, but it wasn't because it wasn't because of me. Mm -hmm. Many, many people cannot fathom doing something like uprooting from where you were born and raised or from where you've been stationed for ten years and and just picking up everything and or selling everything to relocate and especially to a foreign country and then on top of that maybe a foreign country that doesn't your first language is not the official language mm -hmm. um, it makes people uncomfortable <laughs> yeah. because they can't imagine doing it and that's fine everybody has their path um, in yoga the Dharma you know everyone has their role on this this earth and that's great but um, if, if you really have a passion for going somewhere and and sharing whatever your gift may be whatever your passion is with the world um, then then just make a contract with yourself and do it I mean I'm a big I'm a big lister mm -hmm. I like to I have my notebook I carry around with me and I mean my first steps in the process for example we're looking into what are the requirements for me to even start a business? What what papers do I need? Because, oh, when I pack my suitcase, I should probably include those papers. Mm -hmm. um, 
what are the laws regarding visas and residency? Look into that. I at one point in time I had ten pages of lists going on about all these different <laughs> topics. You know, my packing list, my visa list, my you know, my residency stuff that I needed and the business permits required. Um, just start looking into it. And and it can get overwhelming because it's a lot of information and it's a very big change, but I usually set out for myself, for example, if if on my list to do, I can accomplish three things today. That's enough. Mm-hmm. If I accomplish 10, great, even better. But I just took it one step at a time very slowly and tried not to put myself in a situation where I felt rushed. Sure. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I guess that's not the most concrete well, I, I think the uh, the think goal setting goal. and absolutely the, the ultimate priorities, right? Figuring out what is your absolute ultimate priorities that you need to get done that day. I love that advice. And the just do it thing is a central theme. You do a few of these interviews and you start to see trends. And that is absolutely, in fact, Sydney Osman from, from Mint Events we interviewed a few weeks ago. You know, she had the exact same thing to say. It's like, just get out there and do it. If you are passionate about it, you know that's the right thing for you. Don't worry about what other people say. Just just go out and give it a try, and yeah. I, I think it's great advice. Yeah. And and if you really love what you do, and what I've what I've witnessed firsthand is, although I was fully aware that many people around me were very uncomfortable with this because mm-hmm. they didn't understand it, what I've what I've noticed happen is that since I've come here and I've started to do my thing, when you're really chasing this dream and you are are really passionate about what you do, that just spreads to everybody around you and some people won't get it and those people maybe it'll be a week later a year later or or five years later will move further and further out of your circle Mm -hmm. and the people who really do support you and stand behind you that support system will grow and that has been a huge um, motivation for us in moving forward I mean our students that come for yoga are constantly giving us these wonderful ideas like I'd really love to see you guys offering this or that and um, and they're rooting for us there are there are number one fans and that really pushes us forward I mean but when I first was making this decision to move you don't always see all of the cheerleaders rooting you on mm-hmm. it can it be, can become very easy to just see the people who this your your very um, illogical move is bringing up feelings of anxiety and fear within Mm -hmm. them. So definitely, definitely be mindful of that. And then another um, really important piece of advice, if you are moving or if if part of your plan involves traveling for a long period of time or moving to a country um, that has a different first language than your own, learn the language. Mm -hmm. Try, just try. Um, learning a language fluently takes a lot of time, but people appreciate so much the effort and not understanding the language um, can result in being left in the dust. Sure. Missing out, missing out on, on, on the reality of what happens in the culture. Um, so, so be part of the new community that you're choosing and, and definitely learning the language would be at the top of the list as well. Great. Yeah. Appreciate that advice. And absolutely being a business owner, it can be lonely at times, right? So you just have yeah. to, it comes with the territory and be prepared. Yeah. Well, yeah. great. Kristen, what's, what's the easiest way to get in touch with you? Um, well, our, our website has links to all of our other online resources, our blog, Twitter, Facebook. Mm-hmm. What else? We probably have some other stuff on there too. TripAdvisor. Um, and, and all of our phone numbers as well and our email. So probably that's the easiest one site um, directly through our through our website, which is www.vivaelmomento.com. So Terrific. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll be sure to include all that in the show notes. Kristen, thanks so much for joining us. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day and uh, definitely keep in touch. Of course. So much fun. Thanks a lot, Brett. Take care. I'll be, I'll be following along. All right. Appreciate it. Okay. Bye-bye. Take care, Kristen. Before you go, please take 30 seconds to share this video with family and friends. It's as easy as clicking one of the share buttons below. Finally, are you interested in seeing us interview an entrepreneur, travel professional, or someone else you think would make for a great interview? Leave a comment below and suggest an interview, or simply leave a comment telling us how we're doing.